So that brings us to CS. CS stands for Cambridge Engineering Selector. The person that devised uh, this method of material selection is Professor Michael Ashby, who used to be a professor in the materials engineering department in Cambridge University. CS is capable of presenting charts that look like so. So if you wanted to compare a range of materials in terms of um, you know, functional properties or functional properties against physical characteristics or functional properties against um, process capabilities or cost, then Cambridge Engineering Selector is capable of doing that. Again, the software is able to, you know, go beyond that. You can also look at uh, the environmental impact of a selected material. So you can do equal audits you know, similar to what I've just shown you here, to identify what are the points to where um, the carbon footprint of the product is highest or at its lowest. So is it during the transportation phase? Is it during the primary uh, production phase when materials have been extracted in its raw form to its supply form? What about the secondary um, processes, the tertiary process required in transforming these primary uh, materials to its um, designed um, intent. What about the user phase? Is the user phase going to increase the carbon footprint of the product? What about end of life? How difficult is it to you know, recover the material? Are the materials able to be recycled? Things like that. So again, on top of selected materials, you also need to think about you know, the ecological impact of you know, the materials that you choose on the environment. So CES is quite, you know, a very good software to use. And that's one of the reasons why Loughborough Design School as a community is really driving students to use this. Because again, it's not just, you know, uh, students in the design school that use the software. There are um, big businesses in industry that use this um, software, such as McLaren, um, you've got Rolls Royce, you've got Boeing, you've got um, Caterpillar. So there are big companies that also use it. So again, if you're able to you know, understand the use of this package, you know, it gives you an additional skill set when you go into um, industry. So EduPack, so when we open the software as we did last week, um, you will see a number of folders from different levels. So you have level one, which relates to you know, fundamentally known uh, materials level two so level two will be more or less our focus for the tutorials and for coursework three but it's also level three that looks at advanced uh, materials and materials specific to um, certain industry so if you're interested in designing medical devices then there is an extensive uh, data game related to you know biomaterials the aerospace industry the automotive industry has its own unique um, database so when it comes to FYDP, you can then you know extend your range from level two into level three. But for the purposes of understanding the use of the software, we're going to stick to level two. So the software, you know, as shown last week, looks like this, where you've got um, different universes. So there's a material universe and a process universe. You can then you know explore materials in terms of the classes. So if you wanted to look at metals and associated alloys, so when we're talking about metals, we're not just looking at ferrous metals, we're also looking at non-ferrous metals and uh, different various of in terms of how they've been alloyed. There are polymers, so polymers will range from elastomers to your thermoplastic to your thermosets and to you know your hybrid polymers, so your TPAs for instance. Ceramics, so different ranges of ceramics. Foam. So when it comes to foams, it could be you know polymer base or metal base. So it is extensive, and it goes beyond that to look at you know the mechanical uh, parameters of the material, um, various properties, um, 
various um, design indicators to factor when using these materials. But as I stated, there's a correlation between the materials and the range of manufacturing processes. So this is an example here where we're looking at um, cast iron and relating cast iron to cast it and it gives um, a you know, in-depth literature in terms of what the process is and what the process is capable of in terms of its uh, economic um, metrics. So this graph here looks at okay, what is the cost uh, variability in terms of um, production output. So would it be higher, you know, for you know a very low volume of components to be manufactured? What about you know if you need to produce you know vast uh, quantities? What are the implications using this process? It also gives you know further information in terms of um, shape capability. So cylindrical uh, prismatic form. So is the process capable of doing that? What about non-cylindrical um, you know prismatic forms? And that's one of the reasons why I did state that the material that you choose has an impact on the manufacturing process in terms of attaining the intended net uh, form of the design. Very important. And it also looks at other uh, physical attributes and process characteristics. So would the material, that particular process, yield the intended surface roughness? If not, then you need to have another sequence of uh, uh, manufacturing processes to enable you achieve that based on how your design specification, you know, uh, governs the parameters for uh, the, the, the manufacturing process and for uh, the intended uh, physical uh, embodiment of the design. So these are some of the things that you can actually, you know, use EduPack for. Thank you.